Security Level 2 Classified Item Number SCP-5083 Object Class Keter Assigned Site Site 17 Site Director T. Graham Research Head M. Lodge Assigned Task Force Omicron 17 Special Containment Procedures Foundation Satellites are to report any new radio transmissions originating from Unicate 185 to Site 17. If any messages contain coordinates, MTF Omicron 17 Bankbusters is to be dispatched to that location in anticipation of an SCP-5083 event. Any messages receiving from Unicate 185 are to be classified to the general public. Omicron 17 should keep track of any large crowd in the facility, but stay at least 30 meters away at all times before the 5083 event occurs. Personnel are not to attempt to prevent 5083 events by disrupting crowds in the area. Any 5083-1 instances detained by Omicron 17 are to be transported to Site 17 and stored in Low Danger Humanoid Holding Wing, Substation 3. If the number of 5083-1 instances contained at Site 17 reaches or surpasses 15, further instances are to be hydrologically pressed for easier storage. If a 5083-1 instance is in, Agents are to be dispatched to the consumer's home to seize newly appeared currency. Currently, 15 instances of 5083-1 are contained at Site-17. Eight of the instances are missing at least one body part. Description SCP-5083 is an event that occurs one to four times a year in the vicinity of a group of at least ten people. First, an instance of SCP-5083-1 will materialize next to the crowd and begin running in the opposite direction. All members of the aforementioned crowd will gain a strong desire to consume 5083-1 and begin to chase after it. After the event, any affected people will become amnesic. Forgetting the event, since 5083-1's manifestation and losing their desire to consume 5083-1 SCP-5083-1 is a humanoid entity composed entirely of solid gold. Despite this, they are able to animate their limbs in the same fashion as humans, and have been observed to run up to speeds of 35 kilometers per hour. While 5083-1's body is as durable as gold in almost all situations, its body will become soft and malleable upon any attempt to consume it. To date, no negative effects have been recorded as a result of digesting 5081 material. If the 5081 is in, the consumer will receive a pile of their local currency inside at home if one of the doors or windows are unlocked, or on the roof of the home if all entrances are locked. Sometime in the next 10 to 12 hours, the currency will be worth as much as the gold waking up the 5083-1's body. If the mass of the 5083-1 is consumed by multiple people, they will each receive currency proportional to the amount of 5083-1 they consumed. Unless they have undergone at least level 3 memetic agent resistance training, any further people that see 5083-1, after initial manifestation, will gain the same desires to consume them. When 5083-1 stays at least 30 meters away and stay out of sight from all affected individuals for at least 120 seconds, the event ends and 5083-1 is classified as a skit. The Foundation is currently aware of at least 22 escaped 5083-1 instances, what happens to a 5083-1 when it escapes is a no. 48 hours before each SCP-5083 event, a video transmission will be sent from the asteroid Enoch-K-185, located in the asteroid belt, with the coordinates of the event.
An example of one such transmission from 2012, April 10th, is as follows. Round 36. 11 degrees, 4113 North, 106 degrees, 3547 East. Interviews with SCP-5083-1 instances have failed to uncover any useful information about their existence. Addendum. Notable Incident Reports. Incident 1. Discovery. 2002. March 11th. Knowledge of SCP-5083's existence was first discovered on 2002, March 11th, in Manchester, United Kingdom. The incident began when SCP-5083-1 materialized nearby a large crowd in Biohill Park at around 7 a.m. Two police officers nearby heard the commotion caused by the crowd and moved in to investigate. The following is a transcript of Officer Chong Wong So's body cam footage and audio. Begin log 703. Did you hear that? Hey, what? From the center of the park, multiple people yelling can faintly be heard. We should probably check that out. We're hearing what sounds to be some sort of violent commotion coming from Biohill Park. Heading in now. Your win and Ethan ran into the park towards the source of the commotion, passing several confused bystanders. The sound of multiple people yelling unintelligible phrases get progressively louder as they get nearer to the source. Over there! What in the bloody? About a dozen people, all appearing to be over the age of 60, are gathered around a large tree. Throwing coins and rocks into the branches while yelling various insults. Note the civilians were identified using facial recognition algorithms. Get down from there, you... <coughs> Tasty bastard! You can't stay up there forever! Only the Queen is immortal! An instance of SCP-5083-1 is in a tree, concealed by the branches. God, I want that hot hunk of mel! Help! Somebody help me! Holy crap! There's someone up there! I... You video for backup! I'll go and deal with this! Ethan runs towards the tree and the crowd. We need more officers here at, uh, Barrow Hill Park. Straight in the middle. Right now. There's a large group of old people around the tree, and it looks like there's someone... Everyone, get away from that tree! Most of the crowd ignore Ethan and continue to fixate on the tree. Stuck in the tree. Back off, Plunker! This one's ours. Yeah, good up getting past us. I said get away from that tree. No, no, there's quite a lot of them. Ethan tries to get closer to the tree, but is blocked by three members of the crowd. This is our last damn warning before I start making arrests. At this moment, an old man identified as Stephen Hitchcock walks into the vicinity carrying a chainsaw. As he comes into view, the crowd cheers and begins shouting, E.M. up! And one of them just, Oh my god! Help! Please! I don't want to die! Ethan steps in front of Stephen and draws his taser. Put down the chainsaw! Stephen stops for a moment, scarring at Ethan, before switching on his chainsaw and continuing to walk towards Ethan with a grin. Howard Lawson begins running from the crowd towards Ethan and Stephen. Ethan, wait! Ethan fires his taser at Stephen, but as he does, Howard dives in front of him. Two barbed dart impaled themselves in Howard's side. He collapses to the ground, writhing and screaming as he is electrocuted. Freak! Joe Wong makes visual contact with SCP-5083-1. Man, why am I... So hungry. Stephen kicks Ethan in the stomach, sending him trembling to the floor. The crowd cheers as Stephen continues towards the tree. By this time, more police had arrived outside the park, and the foundation had become aware of the event through police radio transmissions and had dispatched MTF New 12 to deal with the situation. Oh, Margaret Hiles, 
feasting capacity to Ethan with her bag, Stephen begins sawing into the base of the tree trunk. Get into my stomach! Timber! As the tree begins to topple over and the crowd rushes to capture SCP-5083-1, it leaps up from the tree top multiple meters into the sky. Its golden shiny body reflects the sunlight, creating a bright flash and momentarily blinding some members of the crowd. When it lands on the ground, it immediately begins running away. After a second, the members of the crowd recover and chase after it. When SCP-5083-1 exited the tree, the multitude of people watching the commotion saw SCP-5083-1 and become affected by 5083-1's compulsion. Backup police arriving on the scene also became affected and began chasing SCP-5083-1 into Manor Road. Around this time, MTF New 12 Trash Dogs arrived on the scene and attempted to capture the anomaly while the extraction team New 12K waited on standby. New 12 were unaffected by SCP-5083-1 due to prior memetic agents resistance training. The following is a transcript of New 12's audio and video log. Note, all members of New 12 were riding on motorbikes. Begin log, 7.37. Anomaly spotted overhead. SCP-5083-1 has been chased by a crowd of about 100 people who are swamping Clermont Road. How are we going to get past the crowd? Oh, go around it. Follow me. New 12 speed up and turn right into Penelope Road, then left onto Summer Road and left again back onto Clermont Road in front of the crowd. The frick do you do now? We got the anomaly and run! As SCP-5083-1 and the crowd gets closer to New-12, New-12-2 fires his bolus gun twice at SCP-5083-1. The magnetic weight wrapped around SCP-5083-1, tying its legs to each other and its arms to its body. New 12-1 catches SCP-5083-1 as it falls over and straps it to the back of her vehicle, as well as concealing with a black cloth. Go, go, go! As New 12 drives away, the crowd attempts to throw various projectiles at them, such as water bottles and foams. New 12 rides away from the crowd for two minutes. I think we lost them. No way they'll catch us to us. Who the hell are you guys? Command, requesting extraction team now. Affirmative. Extraction team New 12K begins to fly into New 12's area, manifesting in the audio as helicopter blades slowly getting louder. Hold on, I think we have a problem. At the end of the street, a police van is driving towards New 12 above the speed limit. Move! At this point, MTF Alpha 45 janitors is dispatched in anticipation of necessary post mission cleanup. New 12 begins driving down Lancaster Road into each Lancaster Road, a highway. A police van continues to pursue them. Command, I'm going to have to delay that extraction. Uh, hello? You guys want to tell me who you are? Let's shake them! New 12 enters the traffic of Fulton Road, swerving around multiple vehicles. The police van follows, lurching to the side to swerve around a black car. Ahead, two trucks were driving side by side. Thanks, it's time we get out of here. New 12 1 through 4 move into a line formation and speed up towards the trucks. What the frick is going on? Oh, well, they're still driving side by side. The four MTF members Ride in through the narrow gap between the two trucks. Hell yeah! Can you at least explain why those old men are trying to grab me? Command, prepare for extraction. Exiting the motorway at... There's a large explosion behind them as the police van smashes through the back of the two trucks, sending them both careening to the side. Its front appears severely damaged. At this point, Foundation drones 
begin scrambling all local police communications to prevent further police force from arriving. Scratch that command! New 12 can to speed down East Lincolnshire Road with the police van in pursuit, both serving around vehicle after vehicle. The police van occasionally crashes through another vehicle to keep going. Off the right side of the police van, a man emerges holding a pistol. He fires at New 12 4, hitting the side mirror of the motorbike, shattering it. I just got fired at! Call me! Another man emerges from the opposite side of the police van, also carrying a pistol. As New 12 2 swerves around a blue car, one of the armed men fires at New 12 2, hitting and shattering the blue car's back screen. Crap! We need to lose these guys fast! Multiple bullets continue to fly past the members of New 12, occasionally colliding with nearby civilian vehicles. Okay, we'll turn right here on too. A bullet collides with New 12 1's back wheel, bursting it and sending her an SCP 5083 1 trembling sideways. SCP 5083 1 screams. New 12 1 is unconscious. New 1! What happened? Wait! Everyone, turn around now! New 12 2, 3, and 4 realize what has happened and turn around to aid New 12 1, but the fan has already stopped beside the vehicle. Three men exit the side vehicle. Grab SCP-5083-1 and haul it into the van. As the police van turns around, New 12, 2, 3, and 4 swerve around New 12, 1 and give chase. Suddenly, the van begins lurching around sporadically and SCP-5083-1 can be heard screaming inside. The van collides with multiple vehicles before coming to a full stop. New 12 surround the van and enter it to find six half-conscious police officers, all amnesic, and SCP-5083-1 missing. Directly after the events of Incident 1, MTF L-45 arrived to perform post-mission cleanup. Amnestics were given to direct witnesses, and the cover story, a left 12 police chase, was disseminated to the press. Following this incident, MTF Omicron 17 was permanently assigned to the containment of SCP-5083. Incident 4, First Containment, 2004, November 10th. On 2004, November 8th, the following radio transmission was received from NDK-185. Round 23, 23 degrees, 21, 16.8 south, 115 degrees, 39.42 east. MTF Omicron 17 was deployed to Herian Bay Cemetery under the guise of cemetery workers and civilians. SCP-5083-1 materialized in the cemetery on 2004, November 10th. The following is a transcript of an excerpt from MTF Omicron 17's video and audio log. It's difficult to express how much Blake meant to me. I've known him since I was 16. We both changed a lot since then. But what never changed was Blake's powerful commitment to friendship. Every day at school, Blake was there to eat me. And every weekend, Blake was there to talk to me. And I'm not sure I'll ever have another friend like that. Tyson begins tearing up. Without Blake... I really won't be who I am today. So much of what I love was given to me by him. My love of fishing, my guitar, and of course, my favorite dish. SCP-5083 when materializes in front of funeral audiences watching the eulogy. Oh God, whenever I eat it, I think of Blake and I'm hungry for it now. I'm hungry for raw, uncooked gold. Where the frick am I? Come here, won't you, yellow man? What? The crowd gets up from the seat and begin running towards 5083-1, knocking over chairs and each other. Members of MTF Omicron 17 enter the area from all sides, converging on the gold man. Oh, crap! 5083-1, one towards 
Tyson punches him in the face and continues pause until he reaches the coffin of Lake McKenzie. He opens the lid, sleeps inside, and closes it behind him. Omicron 17-4 tries to pry the lid to the coffin open, but 5083-1 keeps it closed. Just take the damn coffin! Omicron 17 draws the batons and begin to fight off the crowd of funeral goers, while Omicron 17, 2, 4, 6, and 7 pick up the coffin and run towards the fan. An unidentified large man breaks past the wall of Omicron 17 and dives at the operatives carrying the coffin. The coffin is locked to the group, setting both 5083-1 and the corpse of Lake McKenzie spilling out. Frick, what is there? Dead pussy in there! Omicron 17-6 tackles 5083-1 from behind, while Omicron 17-2 keeps the large man incapacitated. Let go of me! O-17-6 throws 5083-1 into the back of the Omicron 17 transport van. 5083-1 becomes stuck to the magnetized floor. Go! Help! I can't move! Omicron 17 scrambles into the van and quickly drives away from the cemetery. MTF Pi 2 cardboard box arrive two minutes later for post mission cleanup. This file is classified level 5 only. Access granted. Memento kill agent neutralized. Incident 22, Site 1. 2015, July 14th. On 2015, July 12th, a video transmission was received from Unique 185. Round 41. Unknown North, Unknown East. Believed to be some kind of malfunction, the transmission was ignored. On 2015, July 14th, an instance of SCP-5083-1 materialized in the Overwatch Command Conference Chamber, Site 1, during an O5 meeting. The following is an excerpt from the transcript of O5 session 2317-115, and contains excerpts of various Site 1 recording equipment and command systems. If you are reading this and do not have level 5 clearance, I'll further your eyes from the terminal and wait for assistance. This is the fourth fracture this month. This has severely reduced our estimated time to complete Operation Lifeboat. As of now, we are about a month and a half, maybe less, as discussed in our previous session on this topic. Anything short of full extra-dimensional evacuation will be insufficient. Operation Lifeboat currently has the capacity to evacuate about 10% of Earth's population. Is that it? After ten freaking years, that's all we can do. Eleven, this behavior is not appropriate for an overseer. Apologies. With massive budget transfer, we can increase the capacity to about 15%, but models predict this will result in at least ten major breaches over the coming month. All in favor of directing funds from the Department of External Affairs, Department of Personnel Integrity, Internal Security Department, Department of Parabiology, Department of Psychodentistry, Department of Fundamental Theories, Department of Sciences, Department of Analytics, Surrealistics Department, and 16 other departments to Operation Lifeboat as outlined in Budget Proposal 2317-114. As the proposer of said budget change, I will be abstaining. I, 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 I. SCP-5083-1 materializes in the center of the conference table while 057 speaks. Want to eat the goat man? Hey, I think I'm alive. Oh, hey, will you guys all suggest more? 056, 052, 0510, and 054 immediately clamber onto the conference table towards the 5083-1. As they do, the fence drones equipped in the room attempt firing at the 5083-1. The bullets create metallic clanks as they ricochet off its body. 
The 5083-1 attempts to run towards the door, but is drop kicked by 0510. Class Z visual in. Horse alarm, there's an intruder. All security personnel are now tasked with finding and apprehending the gold man. The rest of the overseers climb onto the conference table, engaging in physical combat with each other for control of the 5083-1. The fence drones continue to search for weak spots in the 5083-1, firing at various joints and body parts. Occasionally, a bullet ricochets off the 5083-1 into an 05, creating a loud screech and blinding flash of light as the protective wood absorbs the bullet's energy. 27 seconds after 5083-1's materialization, seven members of MTF Alpha-1, red right hand, armed with medic inoculation equipment, enter the room. Get me out of here! I demand that you leave this room at once. You have no authorization to me. 051 is grabbed by 0514 and thrown off the conference table. While MTF Alpha 1 fights their way through the crowd, 054 bites into 5083 1's shoulder, amputating its right arm. The right arm is lost beneath the crowd, and 5083 1 screams as its torso, legs, head, and left arm are consumed by the overseers. While Alpha 1 fights the rest of the Overseers, 054, 0513, and 058 fist fight over the remaining right arm. 054 overpowers the others, takes the arm, and places it into its Overseer pocket dimension. 054 leaps off the table. Alpha 15 is guarding the north door. 054 runs toward Alpha 15. Twists his face into a cognito hazardous facial expression and continues running into corridor 81B past the incapacitated Alpha 15. 054 has locked down conference room Alpha. 057 has unlocked conference room Alpha. Alpha 1 manages to restrain 051, 2, 5, 8, 9, 11, and 13. However, 053, 5, 6, 7, 10, and 12 managed to exit Conference Room Alpha into Corridor 81B in pursuit of 054. 056 has unlocked Inventory 81A. 053, 5, 6, 7, 10, and 12 each remove various weapons from Inventory B1A set, such as switchback energy grenades, pharmaceutical rifles, occult pistols, and we first matter railguns. By this time, the rest of Alpha 1 have equipped themselves with memetic inoculation equipment and are pursuing the overseers. O510 has activated spatial replacement transporter 8129, 8129 to 8440. O53, 5, 6, 7, 10, and 12 exit spatial replacement transporter 8440 into Corridor 123G. They begin firing various projectiles at 054, who is at the end of the hallway. There are various flashes of light and high-pitched screeches as 054's protective ward violently absorbs the energies and he is thrown to the floor. 054 has set Wing H Spatial Reality Mode to Spyro. As Corridor 123G begins twisting itself into a spiral shape, the pursuing overseers lose their lines of sight on 054, giving him the opportunity to get up and continue running through the now spiraling corridor. The arms of the overseers begin twisting into spirals. 056 has set Wing H Spatial Reality Mode to No. When the walls of the corridor begin collapsing into void, various gaps in the spiral corridor give the pursuing overseers lines of sight once again on 054. Just as 056 is about to fire a ballistic time war missile at 054, 12 members of Alpha 1 uncloak around the overseers surrounding them. 056 fires the missile just as they do, which collides with 05128 trapping most of the Alpha 1 numbers as well as 053, 5, 6, 7, and 12 in a timeless zone. 054 sees this and removes the arm of 5083-1 from his over-serial pocket dimension for consumption. 
0510 has been faced 7 minutes from site 01. 054 leaps off the table. Alpha 15 is guarding the north wall. 054 runs towards Alpha 15, twists his face into a cut needle, has his facial expression, and continues running into corridor A1B past the incapacitated Alpha 15. 054 has locked down conference room Alpha. 057 has unlocked conference room Alpha. Alpha 1 manages to restrain 05, 1, 2, 5, 8, 9, 11, and 13. However, 05, 3, 5, 6, 7, 10, and 12 manage to exit conference room Alpha into corridor 81B in pursuit of 054. 056 has unlocked infantry 81A. 05, 3, 5, 6, 7, 10, and 12 each remove various weapons from infantry 81A, such as zoological grenades, thaumaturgical pistols, occult rifles, and imaginary handguns. By this time, the rest of other one have equipped themselves with memetic inoculation equipment and are pursuing the overseers. 0510 has activated spatial replacement transporter 8129. 8129 to 8440. 0535677112 exit spatial replacement transporter 8440 into corridor 123G. They begin firing various projectiles at 054, who is at the end of the hallway. There are various flashes of light and high pitched screeches as O five force protective mode violently absorbs the energies and is thrown to the roof. O five four has set wing H spatial reality mode to clean bottle. As Corridor one hundred twenty three G begins twisting itself into a clean bottle shape, the pursuing overseers Loose their lines of sight on 054, giving them the opportunity to get up and continue running the now clean bowling corridor. The arms of the overseers begin twisting into themselves. 056 has set wing H spatial reality mode to no. When the surface of the corridor began collapsing into void, various gaps give to pursuing overseers lines of sight once again on 054. Just as 056 is about to fire a ballistic time war missile at 054, 12 members of Alpha 1 uncloaked around the overseers surrounding them. 056 fires the missile just as they do, which collides with Alpha 128, trapping most of the Alpha 1 members, as well as 05, 3, 5, 6, 7, and 12 in a time empty zone. 054 sees this and removes the arm of 5083-1 from his over serial pocket dimension for consumption. 0510 has to wait 7 minutes from Site 1. 054 leaps off the table. Alpha 15 is guarding the north door. 054 runs towards Alpha 15, twists his face into a cop needle hazardous facial expression, and continues running into corridor 81B, past incapacitated Alpha 15. 054 has locked down conference room Alpha. 057 has unlocked conference room Alpha. Other one manages to restrain 051, 2, 5, 8, 9, 11, and 13. However, 05, 3, 5, 6, 7, 10, and 12 manage to exit conference room Alpha into corridor 81B in pursuit of 054. 056 has unlocked infantry 81A. 053 5, 6, 7, 10, and 12 each remove various weapons from infantry 81A, such as chickens, bees, cows, and donkeys. By this time, the rest of Alpha 1 have equipped themselves with memetic inoculation equipment and are pursuing the overseers. 0510 has activated spatial replacement transporter 8129, 8129 to 844 0. 05 3, 5, 6, 7, 10, and 12 exit spatial replacement transporter 844O into corridor 123G. 
They begin firing various projectiles at O54, who is at the end of the hallway. There are various flashes of light and high-pitched creatures as O54 is protected what violently absorbs the energies and he is thrown to the inside. O54 has set Wing H Spatial Reality Mode to Inside Out. Members of MTF Beta Zero, Time Time Wranglers, materialize behind each overseer and constrain them. Note, the remaining arm of SCP-5083-1 was transported to Site-17 post-incident. Addendum 2 On 2020, September 19th, a small envelope appeared on the floor of Corridor 12, Low Danger Humanoid Holding Wing, Subsection 3, Site-17, next to the SCP-5083-1 containment cells. The envelope contained a letter for all the members of the Foundation. Thank you guys for very much being a part of this game for so long. I really can't believe that. When I first started this game 30 years ago, I thought no one would want to play with me. I thought it was just me and the gold mans all day long. Then, year after year, you guys proved me wrong. Not only you guys come back to play, but you teach me so much. The fact you were able to catch Fifteen gold mans without eating them shows to me that playing and having fun is the most important part of the game and not the reward. That's why today I have decided to officially start Gold Man Season 2. This time with double the gold man and double the fun. Can't wait to see you there. Dexter, an investigation into POI 923 Dexter is ongoing.